Hey friends, it's Allison. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be playing with shimmer powders, one of my favorite things to play with in my craft room. And we're going to be using the powders three ways. So the middle card uh, is kind of the main card of the video, but we're going to be looking at how to use shimmer powders with three different types of tools in your stash. So the first tool is a cling stamp, and this is actually one of my favorite ways to use shimmer powders. This is the new Regal Hearts cling stamp from Simon Says Stamp. And when I am going to use a cling stamp for shimmer powders, I just lay it down on my craft mat and I get all my tools out. I have my white embossing powder, my Versamark, and I have my paper. Now I use, oh, and by the way, this is my little dish of embossing powder and this little spoon. Uh, I get that from Container Store, just FYI. All right, I'm using Canson XL watercolor paper, and I'm gonna make sure that I brush the whole surface with anti-static powder. And this is the paper I always use with my uh, shimmer powders. And you can see I'm just adding Versamark all over the stamp. And now I'm just gonna press the paper into the stamp. I'm not using a Misty for this. Um, now I do take a piece of copy paper, or this is probably a leftover receipt from something. Um, and I'm just rubbing the flat of my hand all over. And I'm making sure that paper didn't move or shift. And now I can put my embossing powder on. Now the reason I brought in that copy paper to put on top of this one when I was pressing the ink into the stamp was just so I wasn't putting my hands into any of the Versamark ink on the on any part of that stamp. So I always get perfect results doing it this way. All right, now we're gonna use a stencil. And this is the Heart Bloom stencil from Simon Says Stamp. And now I have my six by six, six grip mat from Waffle Flower on my craft mat. I have my piece of paper, and now I'm putting my stencil over the top. Now the paper's clinging to the grip mat and the stencil's gonna grip to the grip mat. And I, again, I've already treated my paper with anti-static powder. Now this is a paper pouncer from Picket Fence Studios and I've already labeled it uh, with the word Versamark, just so I know that I'm using embossing ink with this particular pouncer. Um, for this, I'm actually using my WOW embossing pad because it's just a lot more, um, my, my Versamark was going dry and this is really saturated. So I'm just taking that ink and I'm pouncing it into the stencil. Now, these pouncers are great. They're kind of like a sponge. They're different than blending tools. And I like using pouncers for things like Versamark or you know, embossing ink or white pigment ink, things like that. So now I'm just carefully taking my paper off the grip mat and I can add my embossing powder. Now, again, I, I was pouncing that ink into the holes in the stencil. And now you'll see that the design is there and my embossing powder is clinging to anywhere where that embossing ink. It's kind of hard to see. Third tool that we're gonna use. This is a World Diamond Plate. Again, a new product from Simon Says Stamp. And it has this really cool pattern in those um, diamond parts. So I am taking my embossing ink and putting it right on the die. Now I have my die cutting machine out. This is my Spellbinders Platinum 6. And I'm putting the die face up, so the embossing ink is facing up. I have my watercolor paper that I'm just gonna gently put down so it doesn't move. And then I'm coming in with the rubber mat and the adapter plate. This is a universal plate system. So I'm laying those on top. The rubber plate is now on top of the paper and the adapter plate is on top and I'm basically embossing with this die and what's happening is it's pushing that embossing ink into the paper 
Now, so, and then I'm gonna add the embossing powder. So, like I said, this die has these really fine details where the, where the diamonds are. And I was hoping to get that detail. Oh, and here, if you have any embossing powder that lands where you don't want it, just take a little paintbrush and just brush it off. So that's what I'm doing there. And now I am just heat setting all of it. I am heat setting it all at once so that I only have to turn my heat gun on once. And there we go. So you'll see that now we have fully embossed panels and we're doing an emboss resist. So here are my shimmer powders. These are my Nouveau shimmer powders. I keep them in this little container. I think it's meant for nail polish, which as you all know, if you've watched any of my videos, I don't have nail polish. All right, now this is that stamp that we stamped at the beginning and it, it looks different, right? That's because I stamped another one with black pigment ink. Um, I just felt like I wanted to do it in black. So I'm using the color Catherine Wheel and this is the easiest one that we're going to do. We're starting with the easiest panel and now I'm adding Cherry Bomb. So I'm just adding two colors and I'm just tapping lightly on those bottles of shimmer powder. If you squeeze um, that will be a mistake because there'll be a ton of powder that comes out of those little bottles. And you can see I'm just spraying it with water and I have this little plastic uh, container on my desk that I like to do this in. It's just cleaner. I, I don't tape my panels down. I like um, holding them with my hands. I know that's crazy. My hands get dirty. They're not hard to clean. I just like being able to manipulate the paper. Um, now I am showing the colors up top of these shimmer powders. Uh, but you can see I just um, sprinkle a little bit of the color on and a little bit goes a long way. So here was a red and yellow. This, this is the stencil. Now normally with a stencil you'll get the color where the stencil holes are. But now we're getting color on the outside of the pattern. So by doing that embossing through the stencil that we did at the beginning, you're now getting kind of an inverse of what you would typically get. So the stencil pattern is remaining white. And by the way, here, when you use shimmer powder and you have large areas of embossing powder where it's resisting the powder, it can bubble up. So I was just taking a little paper towel and kind of blotting up those little bubbles of color. And I'm sorry if I'm, I'm going so fast through this, but this particular panel we're going to spend a lot of time on. Uh, I just could not, I was being really indecisive on this panel. You'll see that I just kept adding colors and I, I don't know. I didn't really love any of it. Here I'm adding some Atlantis Burst, which kind of turns green. And I'm, usually I would advise you to put the color on, spray it, and let it dry because that's where the magic happens. But when I do things like this and I can tell I don't like it, I am just kind of immediately sopping it up with a paper towel. So we're gonna go through a lot of colors on this panel and I think I, I wanted to leave this in here to show you that you can start with one idea of the colors that you wanna use on a panel and that might be what you end up with, but it might not be. And you can kind of change your mind as you're going. Just kind of sop it up with a paper towel like I'm doing and add different colors. And, you know, every time you add water, you can kind of soak up the color that you had put on before. So the reason that I keep coming in with my paper towel and soaking it up is if I don't really like what I'm seeing, I'm gonna kind of sop it up. Like right here, I don't want, you know, big green spots anywhere. I don't want um, 
any one area to be so saturated. So here I'm coming in with Violet Brocade, which is this beautiful purple. And this is kind of where we're going to end up. We're going to end up with kind of a purpley pink background. And that's certainly not where we started, right? So it's a good thing I used watercolor paper because look at how much abuse this paper took. <laughs> and so that's what we're ending up with, pink and purple. Not what I started out with, but that's okay. All right, so here's the panel that I dry embossed with that dye, that world diamond plate, remember? So I'm adding uh, yellows, turquoise, and red. And this is one of my favorite color combinations, by the way. I use this all the time. And that pattern on the diamond plate, it really just didn't do what I was hoping when I dry embossed with it or when I and then I embossed with the white embossing powder I was hoping that the colors would collect in those areas and they really didn't so now I have die cut a piece of watercolor paper with the die and I'm just going to sprinkle the powders right onto the die cut and the die cut does have that very detailed indentations or pattern in those diamonds. So what I love about shimmer powders is when it collects in little grooves and, and nooks and crannies. That's really where the magic happens. Um, or if you use texture paste or things like that, it's it's when it collects around things that that it becomes really magical. And speaking of magical, um, I've only ever used Nouveau shimmer powders, but I just ordered some powders from Lindy's gang for the first time, and I'm super excited to get them. I'm sure you'll be seeing another video of shimmer powders soon because I'll be I'll be testing those for the first time. Um, but here you can see I'm just trying to get um, a lot of different colors. So there we are. There's the final result on that. And I again, I love how the colors collect in those little areas. Now, the other thing you can do with shimmer powders is just take a plain panel. This has no embossing on it. I'm not doing an emboss resist technique with this. This is just plain watercolor paper. And I'm taking some of those pinks and purples and just trying to get a panel. And you'll see what I'm going to do with this in a little bit. But look how beautiful that is. And when it dries, it, it definitely dries back more of, in a more pale version. All right, so let's look at our cards. This is that first panel that we did with the stamp. And the sweetheart die in the middle is the fancy sweetheart from Simon, says stamp. And that little sub sentiment. This is the reverse all the love sentiment strips. I love these sentiment strips from Simon. It's just such a quick way to get sentiments on your cards. Now here was that pink and purple, very tortured panel. Um, that's cute little sentiment comes from the My Love Greetings stamp set. And I also used the um, that fancy sweetheart die again. Now remember that panel that I had colored with just pink and purple. That's what I cut the sweetheart word from. And that's why I, I had done that. But so there is a cool way to use a stencil, I think, getting the inverse pattern. All right, here's the die. Here's that panel that didn't really do what I had thought or hoped that it would do. So then I created the die cut itself. And they both look cool, I think. Now I've also cut, used the die to cut just a plain piece of white cardstock from a larger panel. And so there's the die, and then it creates kind of this um, scallop frame if you cut it out of a large enough piece of paper. Now you, if you saw my last video, um, I used the same die, or one of my last videos, I think. I used the same die and kind of did the same thing with this scallop frame. So what I'm gonna do now is just glue this white die cut to this colored panel and 
because the colored panel is embossed, like it's the circles are raised, you can kind of see it on the screen. I can see exactly where to glue this die cut, like it fits right into place. And this is kind of a good idea if you wanted to use this world diamond plate and have every circle be a different color. It would be a great idea to dry emboss a piece of paper first and then you could just color each circle with uh, like a different color marker. But you would know exactly where to put your colors. So that's kind of a fun idea for this die. So now I'm just adding, you know, I had added the frame around, I added my white on top, and now I've mounted all of it onto a yellow card base. This is obviously bigger than an A2 card, but it, this is going to fit into a 5 by 7 envelope, no problem. Now here's my colored panel. And you can see I'm going to add some more elements. I have these little birds and I have some leaves. And these little birds I just adore. This is the layered bird bunch die set from Simon. And the leaves... I've actually cut these little leaves apart. They come from the same die, and it's a single die. It's called the leafy sprig. Uh, and you'll see how I just snipped them apart. You'll see how I use little bits and pieces here and there. And now I want these to be coming out from behind these holes. So I need to adhere these before I glue down this colored panel. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the top of the leaves so that it's just sticking to my, my little die cut panel. So I'll go ahead and do that for all three bunches of leaves. And now I can adhere this panel to my card. And once I've done that, I can attach my sweet little birds and gosh, I just love these birds. Now here's the sentiment that I'm using for this card. This is the handwritten hello. And I cut it out of black glossy cardstock and put it on a white shadow layer. And I think I, yeah, I added some clear drops. And I may or may not have also moved the little bird on the left. So there's the final card. Um, I think it's really cool to have the shimmer powder background in the back in a very different way than it looks on the die on top. Um, I just love shimmer powders. I think they're so fun to experiment with. And the fact that you can use them with stencils, stamps, dies, gosh, so many other things. Um, if you've never given them a try, definitely encourage you to do so. And don't worry about getting messy with them. Just have fun and, you know, experiment. I really appreciate you being here with me today and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.